Well, guys, as promised, um, you know, I I was going to film a, an MVS feature today, but the weather kind of took a turn on us today. It is very dreary. It is very rainy, very gray. I am very low on gas. <laughs> a lot of varies, a lot of bad varies in this uh, beginning segment of our vlog for today. But what I did do is, uh, since I decided not to film the vehicle that I've been wanting to film for a while now, uh, I decided to go next door to the local GM dealership and kind of get a quote on some of the things that I was thinking I was going to have to order new for the Aztec. And already... It's already looking to be a pretty penny if I completely go that route. So let's get home and we'll go over the list. It is pothole season here in Northeast Ohio. And this road is starting to show them well in, in certain spots. Actually, uh, maybe, not, maybe not so much over here. Uh, there's some ones forming there, but back before I turned the camera on, there was a whole cluster of them. Oh, there's, there might be. Yep, yeah, here's a cluster of them here. Got to move out of the way. Oh yeah, look at all those. And it's probably gonna be like another 10 years before they get filled in. Oh yeah, look at these. Oh yep, yeah, gotta move. Gotta move. Potholes. I made a video about potholes before after my ex damaged her car twice because of potholes. So beware of the potholes. Obviously, don't hit them if you can avoid them. Ah, uh, there she is. In a bit, bottom of every hour is our thousand dollar bribe. This <sighs> I just, I just really wish that I could start fixing everything right now. I just want to, you know, get in it, drive it. But I can't do anything with it right now. So, let's get down to it. Let me show you guys what I asked for and what I can and can't get on this car. Or for this car, I should say. Huh, so here she is. My sad, my sad Aztec. Bled quite a bit last night. Transmission fluid. Fresh transmission fluid. Those are weird spots. Oh. You can see the transmission <laughs> fluid from where it was sitting when it was parked over here. Some of that might be brake fluid too. Still haven't really figured out where that part's coming from. You know, in fact, it is raining a little bit. Um, let me get my phone. Maybe I can record with the light on and shine it up the front of this car here and see if maybe we can look at some of the lines. Let me do this instead. I wonder if I, I can probably record video with the light on, can't I? Yes, I can. All right, I don't know where I'm gonna go, so it's raining, the ground's wet, of course. All right, hopefully, hopefully we are getting something. Uh -huh. I know this would be a lot better if the car was actually up off the ground. I guess maybe that's good enough. I think I swept enough. I don't know. You, I'll put it on the thing as I was filming it. That way you guys can see it. Also, I got my title today. So, it is now officially registered to me by the state of Ohio. Hooray! So, legally, it's mine. Okay. So, when I went to the dealership, I 
pretty much was only asking for things that I feel uh, are important to have new. Uh, I know that there's probably going to be a lot of things that I can pull out of a junkyard. Um, but, um, you know, like the, the training line and other miscellaneous things, I would like to have brand new. That doesn't necessarily mean I have to order it from the dealership. Um, but I just figured, you know, let's find out how much it would cost if I were to do everything with original GM parts and kind of see how much everything would cost. So, the first thing I asked for was the weather stripping. Because obviously I can't put used weather stripping on here. I could always clean this up, which was my original plan. Clean it up and re-glue it, reseal it. But... It looks like it's just, it's shrinked, it's shrunk. It's not covering the corners of both sides anymore. It would only really do good on this, but the top, like this part here, wouldn't match up. So, I asked if they can pull it up, and they gave me a part number, but it's discontinued. Which really shocks me, because I thought for sure, um, you know, with, I know there's a lot of other GM minivans out there, the the Montana and the Venture and stuff, I still see those. Um, I thought for sure it would have been the same part. But discontinued, so I'll have to try to find that particular part on like eBay or something. And if not, I'll have to go another route with that one. So weather stripping for the windshield. Discontinued. Now, the next thing I asked for were the hood shocks. Oh, you can see how bad this is. <laughs> no good. Yeah, this one's this one's the same. Anyway, so hood shocks. I got a part number, but discontinued. So there again. I uh, I was really wanting those ones to be new because uh, I don't want to go to a junkyard, pull them off of another Aztec or any of the minivans or such, because I'm sure they're the same also. But if I buy them and they they fail really quick, you know whatever um, for the time being it's nice having this like this I just don't want it to come down on me when I'm changing all the gaskets in this engine oh which I'm gonna talk about here a little bit too um, so yeah those are discontinued however and I can't open it now because there's no power to the car but the shocks for the lift gate for the glass I can still ooh, sorry tripped I can still get those um, the shocks that keep the glass up, I can still get them. And those are about $40 a piece. So there we go. Actually not as expensive as I thought they were going to be. Uh, so about $40 a piece, I can get brand new liftgate shocks. And I might definitely go that route because there again, those are holding something up. And I don't want anything to come down and crack anybody in the head. So the hood shocks, discontinued. Liftgate shocks, I can still get. 40 bucks a piece. Now, strangely enough, I I did ask for some of the missing bolts and such that are out of this car <laughs> under here. Um, I mentioned it in the one video. There's a, just a couple of them. Uh, the first one, which I don't need too soon because I gotta move it anyway, but I will need it. It's for the uh, you know this relay center, and as you can see, there's a hole there, and the clip is there. It's just kind of fallen down but the, there's a little u-clip there that the screw goes through and it goes into that hole there um, so yeah I can still get that screw it is about three dollars so that's good I will be getting that once we are done with everything else um, I want the correct bolts for this as you can see it's gone um, but yeah, so those two, uh, I can also get those. They have to be special ordered, but those are still available. And they are about $4 a piece. And the one for the coolant tank right over there, um, I thought that that might have been a bolt that went in there. But he said it was a, a rivet. Uh, a little pop rivet goes in there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but he said I could just buy a pop rivet with this uh, particular size that he gave me and 
that'll take care of that. Now, I don't really know if I have to replace this one in particular because this bottle doesn't really move it. It clips onto the to this uh, front brace on this side, you know, this thing. So, I mean, it, it holds that pretty well. You can see it here. Yeah, right there. So it holds on under there, and there's another one there. And then there's a little hole in the side here that that the side of the bottle sits in. So I don't really think that's going to go anywhere. So I'm not entirely concerned about it. But um, I asked about it. So. so I can still get these miscellaneous bolts. And I might ask for some other ones, like when we actually start tearing things apart. I might try to get these motor mount bolts <laughs> all the transmission fluid from the other day when I dumped it on there that's great um, but yeah so so far the bolts that I need there's a train by the way so far the bolts I need I can get and for that we're looking and eh, we'll just say roughly mm, four, eh, yeah we'll say about seven eight dollars for those now I did ask about this particular bypass tube because I really don't like the way this one's looking um, it is it is very rusty and um, for for one I don't like the way it looks and for two I'm kind of worried at some point especially since I'm gonna be taking it off and stuff it's probably gonna be brittle so I did quote a new um, coolant bypass tube um, he did say it also comes with a new uh, gasket and it comes with the new bleeder valve as well, all as one. As you can see, this bypass tube runs here. It's it's right here, and it goes to the toward the back of the engine. Which obviously, once we tear everything apart to do the the gaskets, we'll have easier access to. But anyway, um, it turns out that piece is only about fifty four dollars, and honestly, I. That's a lot cheaper than I thought it was going to be, so I might go that route and actually order a brand new bypass tube uh, when the time comes, once everything's torn apart. So that is a piece, surprisingly, I can still get. Now, oh, hold on. The wife is calling. Oh, I missed it! Hello? Hi. Hello. Uh, I'm filming, but I'm at home doing it. Um, the weather's... Oh. I didn't want to film a feature with the weather like this today, so... Oh, okay. Are you, are you in the house or are you outside? I'm outside. Oh, okay. I'm tinkering with my um, car. Alright, I had to get out of the cold. <laughs> um, the wind and the rain and stuff. It's The rain's really starting to pick up, so... Uh, we're in the tech now. Um, so what I did was um, the last couple of things that I asked for um, um, are pertaining to the transmission leak. Um, I did ask if I can still get the uh, transmission cooling lines, which, you know, hopefully, I don't know what it looks like yet because I didn't look, but hopefully the phone video kind of showed me something. Um, but there's a chance that I might just replace obviously both lines um just I, I mean if the one line blew the other line's probably not far behind so um my main goal or objective when it comes to that is we're going to replace uh whichever line is leaking and i don't know if it's the inline or the return line to the transmission yet but we'll find out in time anyway uh to replace both transmission lines uh, I can get both of them uh, from GM still, which uh, I might do because that's a piece that I honestly think should be original. Um, but if I order it from the dealership, uh, I'm looking at about $77 for the, the inline, and I'm looking at about $83 for the return line. Um, there again, it's the price isn't too bad. Um, uh, like I said, I probably won't buy them both at the same time, but uh, again, there again, I thought it was going to be a little more than that. So, um, yeah, so for, for that, you know, 77 for the inline and 83 for the return, not too bad. 
Uh, but you know, that's something again, we'll, we'll kind of leave that down the road. Uh, we'll be replaced obviously, since we kind of learned it wasn't power steering fluid that was leaking out this whole time. Oh, speaking of which, um, since the reservoir of the power steering pump does look low and you know, near empty, um, there's gotta be a leak somewhere, especially since we aren't getting any kind of power assist to the rack itself. Hopefully the rack's not bad. I really hope the rack isn't bad, but we'll find out in time. Anyway, so I just kind of quoted what the power steering lines would be also. Um, and I, I don't know if the power steering is leaking for sure because I haven't been under the car completely yet to observe everything. But just, just in case, um, you know, I just kind of quoted a high pressure, you know, power steering line, the line that goes from the pump to the rack. And uh, this is surprising. That line from GM is $124.82. And that is more than I thought that would be. Um, I mean, I don't understand why the transmission lines are a lot cheaper. And one line itself is almost $125. So we won't have any, obviously, any decision on that until we, we see where the power steering fluid is going or why it's not going to the rack. Uh, but it's quoted, so that's what I'd be looking at if I went that route. And last but not least, I got a quote on the actual key. Now this, you can't see it now probably because it's too dark, but this is the original Pontiac key. It's got the Pontiac head. This is actually key number two, according to the driver information display when the battery is on. So this is driver two. They don't have... Uh, driver one anymore the the at some point down the line the key number one was lost so this is the only key that will operate this Aztec at this point in time so I don't like the idea of having just one key and I had him quote me what a key would cost the key itself at this dealership is about $34 just for the key itself and then there is a $20 fee to duplicate the code. Uh, the nice thing is the car doesn't have to be at the dealership for them to program it. Uh, they can take the code straight from here. And as long as I bring in the title, they will, you know, because it's proof that uh, I own the vehicle, uh, they will just automatically duplicate the code into the key. Now the problem here is they were inspecting the key, and yeah, this you know this is a, a 17 year old key, and there are certain spots on this key that are filed down, pretty, you know, pretty good. Uh, so there's I think he said there's only two or three points on this key that'll cut well. Um, so what they would have to do is um, they would have to fine cut the duplicate key, I guess to you know ensure that the cuts are good enough there's that but if this key wouldn't be any good i would probably end up ordering two new keys so i'm looking um you know at about 60 dollars in keys plus the 20 dollar fee for the code duplication which is good because they only charge you once once for that so we'll see how that goes unfortunately they don't make the pontiac heads anymore they just say gm but regardless of whether you know, I get two keys or not, I will still keep this key, obviously, since it's the original. But it's good to know that I can still get the pass key three keys done and programmed without the car actually being at the dealership. So, guys, that's really all that I had quoted on this uh, Aztec. Uh, let me give you guys the final number on the actual quote from the dealership. Who's that? That's not their dog. Uh-oh, somebody's dog's missing. I hear them. Why don't you come over here? Okay, now now it's getting windy. Um, so for everything that I basically listed off in here, you know, the struts um, for the lift gate, uh, the two keys, um, the fees for the keys, like the duplicate code and such, um, the bolts, the um, lines for the transmission, everything that I mentioned, $650 if I were to straight up order everything right now through the dealership. Um, I'm not going to lie, I thought it was going to be a lot more than that. So um, that's why this is going to be a 
<laughs> it's going to be a nice, timely project uh, because I'm not going to buy everything right away. Um, but I do have the priorities on what I want fixed first and, um, you know, how soon, once the weather clears up, how soon I do want to get those uh, fixed. Now, real quick before I end this vlog, I just want to say um, that I may have misdiagnosed the issue with the engine. Um, I don't honestly, none of the Aztec videos have been posted on YouTube at this point. <laughs> I'm actually getting ready to upload vlog number 100 tonight. So I'm sure at this point, maybe some people have commented about the condition of the engine and such. Um, I'm starting to think it's not a head gasket issue. I think there would be a lot more symptoms. The car doesn't smoke out the tailpipe when it's running. Um, so the 3400 uh, V6s along with the 31s and the 38s were known specifically for faulty intake gaskets. And I'm pretty sure it's the intake gasket, not the head gasket that is bad. Um, with the intake gasket, uh, the symptoms aren't as severe, but we obviously have uh, coolant in the oil. Um, the car's not running right. Um, it doesn't always want to start up right, which is a symptom. Um, so, but if it was a head gasket issue, then there would be smoke out the tailpipe, and um, it would probably we would probably actually be leaking, you know, oil or coolant from the engine block itself, where the gasket has failed. But I think it's just going to be an intake gasket. So even though, uh, you know, I bought the, uh, the entire head gasket kit, you know, we might as well just change them all anyway. Um, I'd rather, I'd feel more comfortable changing all of the gaskets and knowing that they're all fresh. And hopefully I'll never have to do them again. So I do think it's intake issue now, not a head gasket, which is good because there's probably a less chance of there being any damage to the heads or to the uh, actual block itself. And it is kind of loud up front. We might need an exhaust manifold. I don't know yet. I'll have to see how it works. It could just be because of the gasket, intake gasket, that it sounds terrible. We'll see. Only time's going to tell once we actually start opening up this, uh, <laughs> up this can of worms, I guess. So... That's going to be it for today's vlog, guys. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you... Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed learning about how much we're going to be putting into the Aztec so far. And, uh, you know, leave your comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for more uh, Mike's Vehicle Spotlight, Mike's Vehicle Vlogs, Aztec videos, whatever. So, don't forget to subscribe. Check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of the Mike's Vehicle Spotlight and Mike's Vehicle Vlog apparel. And, like I said, Mike's Vehicle Spotlight will be coming back. I'm really glad I didn't film tonight because my hands are numb. And I wasn't wearing the appropriate jacket today because it was supposed to be a tad warmer. And the wind is killing me. Alright guys, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Take care. Ah, well, I got a little bit of stuff. Oh, that line looks terrible. It's too much plastic. <laughs> Man, she's gonna blow those speakers out of that car.